So friends, I'm entering Hope, Arkansas. You can see that it is the world record watermelon. And Elvis actually attended a watermelon party here and played here at two different places and a few other interesting things too. Stay tuned. So friends, I'm in Hope, Arkansas. And something that I find interesting here is Amtrak Station. It's very cool stuff. This looks like coming out, so they would push that to come out. But the Amtrak train would come right down here to this station. And they've got an old train station there, and then they've got one that looks really cool, really nostalgic right there. So I'm going to go take a look at that. Stay tuned. This is the home of Bill Clinton. I thought they said that uh, uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas was the home of, of Bill Clinton. It says stop in for a free map and directions to the Clinton birthplace. Hmm? So I just want to scoot through here and look, boy, this is old, old, old school friends. I love it. No pets. It's old nostalgic stuff. It oh, is super cool. This is the Amtrak waiting room. Oh, this tiny. I'll take a picture in there. We can be able to see with the with the camera. I'll take a picture so you can see. Yeah. What's happening in there? Other than hope, little hope. Real nostalgic, cool looking place. Look at an old truck over there. Hey buddy, I'm filming this train car right here. How are you? Excuse me. This says railroad inspection car. This two man inspection car was built in 1949, 80 by Fairmount Hello. Railway Motors. Yeah. Sorry. It says this two-man inspection car was built in 1948 by Fairmount Railway Motors. Signalmen especially relied on this motor car for transportation as they inspected signals, automatic switches, and crossing gates. Known for its lightweight and easy handling on or off the rails, the cars such as this could travel up to 50 miles per hour. Motor cars were phased out of service by the railroads in the late 1970s. And this is on loan. Not really much to it. It's a little tiny thing. And they're saying you could even drive it off the rails. Very cool looking stuff. Appreciate you, man. Mm -hmm. So you got that old truck across the street. And this is downtown Hope, Arkansas. So we're gonna to go to the other side and this is gonna be just this, but I've got other stuff. But look at this old old Ford. This is cool.
Love those old looking floors like that. Trunk. There's just some. That right there is termite damage. If you've ever wondered what termite damage is, that's what it does. They'll get inside and eat. They eat cellulose based things, which is wood and other stuff. They'll eat foam. But all that is termite damage. Quite a bit of it. A lot of nostalgic buildings down here. A lot of these cities now, people are coming into the downtown and restoring the buildings, which is really cool. See, that one doesn't even have a roof. Get them all fixed up. This is appliance repair sales, Western Alto. It's old school Western Alto. But I think they just do appliances. No, they've got the... Okay, this radio flyer right here, I'm going to tell you a story about this. 1972, my dad went to a Ford dealership to buy a station wagon. We could not afford the full-size wagon. We could only afford a Pinto. They were giving away, if you bought a full-size wagon, you got one of those town and country radio flyer wagons with the Ford station wagon. So my dad told him that if he would give us one of those wagons for the Pinto, he'd buy the Pinto, and he did. And that Pinto, by the way, 1972, it was, it was sparkle green, ran hot on the way home that day. That is a true story. 1972, that was purchased in a little town outside of Greenville. What was the name of that town? They got all kinds of stuff in the windows, old school stuff. Bicycles. That's cool. You don't see those things in big cities. I like the that small town look. Um, I'll have to try to think on the name of that of that city. It was outside of Greenville, and my dad played in a gospel band that was church down there. Well, it's not coming to me. I'll think of it. Some old, old bricks. What was like this? I was going to say an old theater, but I don't think so. You can see where there was a second floor up there. That little town was called Bethel, North Carolina. Bethel. I smell fresh cut lumber. I don't know where it's coming from. This says created by the Randolph Rose Collection using the lost wax cast bronze method. These sculptures are titled All Aboard. The group portrays a train conductor calling a woman and her young daughter to catch a train in the 1920s. First settled in 1873, Hope was incorporated in 1875 and was named for the daughter of James M. Lawborough, the land commissioner of Cairo and Fulton Railway Company. Hope Lawborough was born in 1869 and died in 1918 and is buried at Mount Holly Cemetery in Little Rock. Through the generosity of Farmers Bank and Trust, residents and visitors alike will enjoy this dynamic display for years to come. It's pretty cool. It looks fairly new. This is the conductor, and you can see that he's got a stopwatch. Looks like 3 o'clock. And he's saying, all aboard. And then they're running for the train. She's got a little teddy bear. Very cool looking. This reminds me of in Greater Holland, where the colonel was from, there's a statue very much like this, where in World War II, they were told to flee towards Rotterdam, and the women and children did flee towards Rotterdam and ended up getting killed because of them fleeing. Breda ended up not getting bombed, and the place between the two ended up getting damaged. It really puts me in mind of that, sadly.
So friends, I want you to feast your eyes upon the home of President William Jefferson Clinton. Slick Willie, as it were. They are closed because they have them until 4 o'clock. So I'm not going to try to go in, but I just wanted you to see it. This was the birth home of William Jefferson Clinton. Right here. Bill Clinton. Grew up here. He's one president that I did get to meet. I told y'all the story. Got to shake his hand. And they've turned this into a, a museum now. And it shows. Well, I'll just shoot a picture in there. Because, of course, it looks nothing like it did when he lived here. That gives you an idea. This was Bill Clinton's birth home. Little garage back here. This seems to be, I would say that this would be a well to do area. You see the houses are pretty nice. These are not tiny houses. There was a parking lot there. So if you come here, you could park behind the house and walk through. I didn't know that, so I parked up there at somebody's driveway. But you know how I am. I can figure out a way to get in trouble no matter where I go. So this was dedicated in March of 1999. UPS. Let's see what this is over here. In this house, I learned to walk and talk. I learned to pray. I learned to read. I learned to count by numbers, number cards. My grandparents tacked on the window. So actually, this is the birth house. Okay. This house was the first home of William Jefferson Clinton, 42nd president of the United States. Clinton lived here for the first four years of his life with his mother and maternal grandparents. He continued to visit his grandparents here until his grandfather's death in 1956. So is this where it was? Physically? This makes more sense. The other one is a house that was close by, but of course all this is locked up. So this makes a little more sense. Okay. Yes, okay. I can buy that. The other one, I was like, eh, it just seems odd to me. This right here is where he would sneak out at night. <laughs> no, he was a baby when he lived here. Yeah, that gives you an idea of what it looks like inside. It's a pretty 
presidential seal. No, a different kind of seal. So when you come here, just so you know, this is the office. This is how you get tickets and that kind of stuff. Bathrooms, that kind of stuff. Parking over there. That is the actual house right there. Just so you know, I didn't know and I parked in somebody's driveway. I can tell you when I pull up the places I'm so excited about jumping out and filming. And a lot of times I don't look around very much like I should. I'm just ready to go. So that's the parking lot right there in the way. That's a rough parking lot. Good Lord. So I parked in these people's driveway. It doesn't appear anybody's living here, but they could be. So if you're interested in visiting the birthplace of Bill Clinton, this is where you do it at. And he was right here by the train tracks if the house hadn't been moved. That Amtrak stuff I showed you is right down there. We are at the corner of West Avenue A and North Elm. You can see that it is right there. So this is City Hall. And upstairs, they have a um, auditorium. It's called Robert Clips Auditorium now. And if you're in the audio world, in like PA speakers and that kind of stuff, you would recognize that name. He invented loudspeakers, or some loudspeakers, not the loudspeaker, but he invented his brand of loudspeakers called Clips. It's kind of hard to say. But he wasn't born here, but he lived here when he came out with it. He had a workshop here. But right upstairs is where Elvis and Scotty and Bill would have played. And this concert that they would have done here would have been... And I'm going to walk up those stairs. I don't know if I can see anything. But that concert would have been in 55. I'm going to say the very first concert that they played here was in February 22nd, I'm on, I think maybe 1954, possibly, well, no, it couldn't be 54, it had to be 55. So February 22nd, 1955, so it was really early on. You've reached the City of Hope, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 8 until 5, closed for lunch from 12 to 1. If you've reached this message, we are with someone else or on... So sadly, that's I was hoping it was an individual's number, but it was Parks and Rec, and I, was, I didn't hear Leslie Nope on the other side, so I don't know that they would come open this for me, but it just depends on if I'm here again. I may ask them if I happen to be here again. But other than that, it is still in use, and Robert Clips which is the founder of the speaker company. This auditorium is dedicated in his name now. And there's wood behind that, so it's blacked out, actually. Dag on it. But the auditorium that they played in, and boy, I am up here, guys. 
I do not care for it. It was right there. So they played inside this room. Indeed, they did. Ooh. Takes my breath to be up here, believe it or not. That metal kind of goes boom, boom like that a little bit. Makes my heart skip. This is one of the spots. I'll go around to the front. I took a picture of it so you could see. I'm gonna walk around the whole building. Sounds like woody woodpeckers at work over here. So the guys would have had to go through one of these doors, most likely. I doubt they had a modern fire escape back then. What in the world is going on with this? So they could have come through here and you see there's stairs on either side to go up. So they could have, I would say they would have probably entered this end because the stairs go up on this end. I don't know that those stairs would have been down on the outside at that time. If they were, they definitely didn't look like that. Or I wouldn't expect them to look like that. They wouldn't have been that kind of metal in the 50s, I wouldn't think. But this is the front. GPS coordinations here. The mosquitoes are trying to tuck me off. We got one more. Let's go around this side. And like I say, if I'm around Hope, Tomorrow during the day, I may stop back by and see if somebody will let me in. But I can tell you from experience, government employees are not going to do one thing extra. Anything that requires effort. There's exceptions, but for the most part, if you ask them for things like that, nah. Yeah, so the stairs going up are on the far end down there for the auditorium. So I would say most likely they loaded in on that side. But they could have, I would assume that the stage is on this end, they could have loaded in here. And that could be original. I have no way of telling that, but it's possible that they loaded in here. I'll see if I can find an old picture from back here, but it'd be in the back, not likely. But it'd be more likely they went through this door than to go through. They would have had a way to get up and out from the back side, let's just say. That would have been the people watching. This would have been loading in and out, which the guitars and stuff be a lot of fun. Not really. Thank you.